Coming up on Small Town Big Deal. In China, dragons are loved, respected, and raced. Today, that ancient sport of dragon boat racing is catching fire all around the world. And for one week in a year, in a small road out in town, it's all about dragons, drumming, dancing, and dumplings. We find out just how many of those dough balls the winner slams down in two minutes flat. Welcome to Small Town Big Deal, I'm Rodney Miller. And I'm Jan Carl. And today we are in Rhode Island, our smallest state. But it has the longest name. It's officially the state of Rhode Island and Providence Plantation. Wow, that is a lot of names. <laughs> well, Rhode Island's got a lot to offer. Including this beautiful historic town of Pawtucket. And an aquatic festival that has its origins from across the globe. <laughs> This is the Rhode Island Chinese Dragon Boat Races and Taiwan Day Festival. <laughs> Talk about long names. The festival takes place in and along the banks of the Blackstone River, which runs from Worcester, Massachusetts, down past the festival site in Pawtucket. Thousands come to the river each year, drawn to the energy and the color, and to be immersed in Taiwanese and Chinese culture. But mostly they come to see the dragons. Dragon boating is a big part of the Chinese culture. It, it's like on NASCAR. TV, it's like NASCAR. Millions of people will watch it on TV. It's, it's on their currency. It's, it's part of their lifestyle, dragon boating. Matt's right about it being like NASCAR. Check out the national championships in China. While few countries can boast that kind of competition, the passion is spreading. It's now one of the fastest growing water sports in the world with more than 70 member countries of the International Dragon Boat Federation. And here in the US, hundreds of events are held annually that involve this ancient Chinese sport. But those dragon boats are big and heavy and it takes more than muscle to make them go fast. The key to dragon boating is timing. Everyone has to be together. So a big strong team will not beat a team that has really good timing. It's all about rhythm. That rhythm comes from the all-important drummer. Every team has one who pounds out a cadence to try to keep the paddlers in sync. Whoever your slowest paddler is, however fast that person can go is as fast as the team can go. Because if everybody is going at an 11 and your slowest is going at, at 9, your boat's not going to be in sync. So, yeah. so that's, that's the responsibility of the drummer is be able to tell who the slowest paddler is and get them to go as fast as possible and get everyone to match that speed. So who is it? I won't uh, tell. I don't know yet. <laughs> I don't know yet. Sure right. you don't. Right. But how did Pawtucket, Rhode Island get on board with dragon boat racing in the first place? We have about 15,000 Chinese Americans that have migrated here through the, through the years. Um, and that's where really the event started. Two of those immigrants, both successful businessmen, had an idea to help revitalize the town's waterfront district. But their thought was, if you really want to bring it back to life, you need to get involved in dragon boat racing. And I had never seen a dragon boat and you're like, in my in life. And you're like, what? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So they showed me some pictures, and then they said, we'll buy two dragon boats, and we'll bring them over from Hong Kong. That was 20 years ago, and the event has been growing ever since. Those first two wooden boats were replaced with longer fiberglass models graciously donated by Taiwan. And this year, teams will paddle six new, smaller boats in a special heat, also gifted by the people of Taiwan. Rhode Island officials travel to Taiwan to meet the makers of the boats, including a gifted lead craftsman who is 80 years old. All the boats here in Pawtucket have unusually large dragon heads. That's to accommodate the flag catcher. They're gonna be racing down their lane, and in the middle of their lane will be a flag, and there'll be a person on the boat whose job it is to take the flag off, and then they cross the finish line. If they miss the flag, they get penalized. 
these races feature a few other unique rules. Teams must have at least eight female paddlers on the large boat and six on the small boat. Each team races in two qualifying heats, one in the new shorter boat and one in the longer boat. Nine teams qualify for three more rounds, with the fastest three then racing for the $5,000 grand prize. With that kind of money on the line, some serious club teams show up from around the country. But there's still plenty of local groups that show up and paddle just for the fun of it. And Rodney and I each found teams to root for. This is so Blackstone Valley Prep Mayoral Academy, and our team is called the Pride of Dragons. So Pride is perseverance, respect, integrity, uh, discipline, and enthusiasm. I love it. Pride. So I want to know, do educators make good athletes? Uh, we are disciplined. <laughs> We are disciplined That's a very people. PC answer. Yeah. We are disciplined people. We have this, this muscle up here is really strong. But will my team's mental muscle be any match for physical muscle? They call themselves Fire on the Water. Kerry Taylor is the owner of a local gym, and every year he puts together a team of pumped up paddlers. Yeah. On a scale of one to 10, how would you rate your seriousness? Uh, I would say our <laughs> Our seriousness as a team would probably be at a eight or nine. But once we get in the boat, I have a team of very competitive people, so we really try to get after it. Kerry is a pretty big guy. I mean, I think he can win this race by himself. As it turns out, my team fire and Jan's team pride ended up in the same morning heat. And it looks like my group of brainiacs should have studied more on how to line up in the starting gate. You you guys have got a little problem uh -oh, there. Uh-oh, now we're a little askew. Yeah, skywalk looks like ugly. Is that a word? I think so. It's a word I use all the time. I mean, kind of not right, you know? Whatever you say, Rodney. We'll see if my team can get un -sigogly. And Rodney gets a big surprise when we become Dragon Team Walk-Ons. Back at the Dragon Boat Races in Pawtucket, Rhode Island, where I've been following this group of rowdy rowers called Fire on the Water. And Jan has been hanging out with a group of educators who call themselves Pride of Dragons. Well, teachers don't use paddles like they used to, and that takes on a whole new meeting with my group. They have trouble even getting lined up straight and never quite get in sync. But my group of power lifters look strong. I think you are in the lead. I think you guys are in last. And look at this athletic move by the fire on the water flag catcher. Got it! Yeah, she definitely works out. Yeah. Oh, hi, right. baby. Right. Good job. Thank you, Thank you. With that, they have a chance to make the finals with one more heat to go. As for my team of teachers, well, we'll just give them an A for effort. It was tough. It was tough. What happened? Could tell me what happened out there. Uh, parents, parents were rough. Yeah, yeah. You uh, guys were all over the place back there. Yeah, no. We, we, uh, so we were the first one to get close to alignment, and while we waited for the other boats to come in, we just started drifting. Yeah. We expended a lot of energy just getting to the finish line. So you were like worn out before just the race started. Yeah. But as they prep for that second heat, we feel the need to march to the beat of a different drummer. Just like the racing, the Taiwan Day Festival gets bigger and better every year. In these 500 seats that are in front of the stage here, people will come and they will never leave. They will stay because they love the culture, they love what they're seeing, and it's young people um, from yo-yo tossing to dancing. I think it's really important that we sort of show everyone Taiwanese culture because it's not really that well known. And like as children ourselves, we also get to learn about our parents' culture. We would like to know how to speak a little bit of Cantonese, thinking. Yeah, how do you say small town big deal? That's a good way. So small town is Su Sing. Su Sing? Sing. And then big deal is Dai Si. Su Sing Dai Si? Yeah. That's really good. Su Sing Dai Si. Rodney did pretty good with the Cantonese lesson. A lot better than I did with the Chinese yo-yo. So Douglas, 
How special is it that the traditions of Taiwan are being celebrated here today? Mm, so I think this is really important. It's part of our public diplomacy uh, as we're celebrating Taiwanese culture in the United States. And part of this event we have is the Taste of Taiwan. There's a lot of good cuisine that people in the United States uh, miss, especially for those Taiwanese Americans. And the biggest food attraction? the Chinese Dumpling Eating Contest. The rules are simple. Contestants have two minutes to eat as many dumplings as possible. And this year's overall winner? Powers down 55 dumplings. He wins a free trip to Taiwan. And maybe a stomach ache. Well, I didn't tell all your fans how you did this. I just kept eating. <laughs> It's a good thing Rodney didn't participate because we secretly signed him up to row with the local dragon boat team. Did you do your morning stretches? Yeah, yeah, yeah I'm good. almost stretched out. You went to bed early? Uh, pretty early, <laughs> yeah. yeah. No alcohol last night? <laughs> None. Okay, great. <laughs> My rowing experience, zero. Unless a canoe counts. Fortunately, Rodney's on a boatload of nautical novices. Rhode Island Lieutenant Governor Dan McKee's team of officials and staffers. Their paddles are not together at all on Rodney's team. They're like doing the wave. I'm thinking this is proving politicians can never quite get together on anything. Rodney's team came in last, and then things got even worse. So far, we're the only boat that's had to be towed in because we couldn't get back to the dock. <laughs> wow. I call that the toe of shame. To be fair, we have to give Rodney his chance at payback. OK, we're not going to need these, right? So I'm joining up with a group. Hi, I'm getting coaching. This one in Hawaiian shirts who call themselves the Couch Dragon. So what are our chances? 0 0.0. <laughs> 0.0. Okay. Probably not a good sign that I'm still getting paddling lessons just before the start. Yeah. Fortunately, our competition didn't seem any better prepared. They're doing a lot better than we did. The couch dragons faded near the end but hung on to the win. But remember, it's the race against the clock that counts. We beat our competitor by at least two dragon boat lengths. It was really slow. But we apparently were a second and a half slower than Rodney's boat. What can I say? I thought maybe you were going to wear yourselves we go, out. We go really fast when we're going straight, but after that, we're, we're a mess. <laughs> <laughs> we did beat you. I just want to point that out. I think you said that. <laughs> Coming up, will Rodney's Fire on the Water team make the finals and win the top prize? Here's a little fun Pawtucket, Rhode Island quiz. What famous toy is from here? Is it Play-Doh, Mr. Potato Head, or My Little Pony? The answer when we come back. We're back in Pawtucket at the annual Rhode Island Dragon Boat Races and Taiwan Day Festival. So right before the break, we asked you a little Pawtucket, Rhode Island quiz. What famous toy is from here? Play-Doh, Mr. Potato Head, or My Little Pony? And it was a bit of a trick question because all three are from here because Hasbro is located in Pawtucket. And a little side note, Mr. Potato Head was the first toy ever advertised on TV. Hasbro is just one of many successful companies here. The name Pawtucket is Native American for by the waterfall, and it was the waters of the Blackstone River that first brought industry to the area. Visitors often come to see that waterfall and Slater Mill, the first successful water-powered cotton mill, which is credited with starting the U.S. Industrial Revolution back in the late 1700s. McCoy Stadium is also a popular spot. It's home to the Pawtucket Red Sox. This minor league team is famous for playing the longest professional baseball game ever, 33 innings. Rhode Island was always built on different cultures. People came here from all over the world to find work, and, and they did find it here. So all cultures are important, but in this particular day, we celebrate the Chinese culture, the entertainment, the food, the crafts. And of course, dragon boat racing. Woo
One group of teams we rooted for in these races has a significant connection among its members. They are all breast cancer survivors. In addition to the racing, a ceremony is held where each paddler tosses a pink carnation into the water to remember those who lost their battle with the disease. Next up, the second heat. Rodney is ready to see if his fire on the water friends can make it to the finals. This heat features the new shorter boats and it's dragon nose to dragon nose in the early going. Come on 212! At the end, Fire on the Water uses their endurance and another great flag catch for the win. But their fire is quickly drenched. Although they did win both heats, their combined time isn't quite fast enough to advance to the final money rounds. But winning isn't everything. Five years ago, two of the team's members got something far better than a cash prize. They got engaged. Well, they were both members at the gym, um, and over time they got to know each other. And I had no clue, and nobody at the gym had any clue. But uh, once we came off the boat from winning, he got on his knees and proposed. Did you get down on one knee on the dock? Right over <laughs> there, actually. <laughs> yes, yeah. right on the dock. Yeah. He did. Aww. Wow. Aww. So I have to ask you, how have the last five years been? They've been good. <laughs> Can't wait for the next five years. Yes. For Matt and Courtney, the Asian culture belief that dragons represent good luck and prosperity certainly rings true. In China, dragons were believed to rule water and the rain. More than 2,500 years ago, dragon boat races were held to awaken the dragon in the spring so he would provide rain for the crops. Another legend tracks the origins to a beloved Chinese poet named Chuan. When his kingdom was overthrown, he was so sad he threw himself into the river. Local fishermen beat their drums and splashed their oars to keep the fish from eating him. The blending of these two stories has helped uphold the tradition and bring racing into modern times. Now these modern dragon jockeys aren't worried about rain for the rice crop. They're in it for the fun and fortune. The fastest time of the day. One minute, ten seconds, point three four. Going to the newly richest team here, CYPN Storm. Come get your money. CYP and Storm, a team from Boston, just edged out the other two boats by a dragon's neck to take home the five thousand dollar grand prize. Not bad for a day on the river. Whether you're into dragons or dancing or dumplings, the Rhode Island Chinese Dragon Boat Races and Taiwan Day Festival has something for everyone. And it's more proof of what we find all across the country. America is truly a wonderful melting pot. We hope you've enjoyed this episode of Small Town Big Deal. You know, the sun came out, it's a beautiful ending to a remarkable cultural experience. Yeah, so we knew about the boat races. I didn't know about all the dance and the yo-yo demonstrations. Those were great. Yeah, and I had no idea that the dumplings were gonna be so exciting, even more exciting than the races. I think for some people, it definitely was. So here I wanna know, would you paddle again? Oh, definitely, that was a lot of fun. Oh, me too. I'm not sure they'd invite me back, but I would do it again. <laughs> I'm Rodney Miller. And I'm Jan Carl. Join us again next week when once again we celebrate the great stories from across America. Photo finish! Hey. Oh, I have to unloop it. Oh, wait. Oh, it's, I had to unloop it. Yeah, I'll it. <laughs> and then toss it. Oh, oh. <laughs> I don't know if this is an indication that it could sink, but better to be safe than sorry. I got your fork. Try the front right. I'll try the pate. It's not pate, it's pad thai. <laughs> pad thai. <laughs> it tastes the same no matter what I call it. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>